Summer Strand is a friend to Celebrity Catwalk, a pet lover, and a certified personal trainer. Thanks for being here, Summer. My pleasure, my pleasure. <laughs> so how long have you been a part of the fitness world? Uh, for years. Years? For, for a long time, <laughs> for a while. Okay. <laughs> So how did you get started in fitness in general, besides your daily workouts? Because you're, you're pretty fit. Have we, have we seen Summer's arms? <laughs> how did you get involved with fitness? Um, I've always done something within fitness. I, like When I was in ninth grade, I would teach the phys ed classes. The teacher would just kind of take off and leave me in charge, and I would teach a class, and they give them like, you know, dance aerobics or you know running around and, and mm -hmm. I just thought it was really a lot of fun to direct people within fitness mm -hmm. and then I became a dancer for many years and performer and then I would always I would always train people I was always guide people I would always teach and I would always swing back into fitness every so often and then I just kind of when I retired from dancing I retired I decided to just stick with the fitness because it truly made me happy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I see you went from fitness to pet exercise. We added it on. I do something called Get Pet Fit with Summer and it's a way for you to kind of get exercise with your smaller pet. Mm -hmm. So if you have a cooperative bunny or cooperative cat or a small dog, if you have a big dog you're going to get walks in no matter what because mm -hmm. big dogs are out a lot more usually. Yes. And uh, little dogs, you know, especially the ones that go on piddle pads at home, they kind of tend to not, you know, they can become couch potatoes mm -hmm. like we all can if we don't, if we're not motivated to move enough. Of course, of course. So it's a great way to also uh, teach your dog to stay alert to you mm -hmm. and to bond. Mm -hmm. And then you get your butt back up to your shoulder blades and that's not that <laughs> bad. <laughs> So what type of exercises are we talking about? Are we talking about squats or yes. biceps? Yes, what? we want to tone and then at the end we want to stretch a little bit. And when we stretch, we also stretch the dogs a little bit and, you know, carefully because they're not really props, they're a companion that you're working out with. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you don't really, you know, even though you're lifting them every so often, they're always safe and you have a safe grip on them and, and uh, even though she's wearing, you know, the get pet. So these are arm bands? They're just leg warmers for, for fun. Leg warmers. Yeah. This is your brand? No, this is a uh, Roberto Negrin made those for me. So cute. So right? there's a leg warmers and the headband yeah. that props her ears up perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Grace, are you ready to work out? But before we work out, what are some safety precautions that people need to know about their pets before working out? Okay, if your pet is not comfortable or not, sorry, dog okay. hair. Dog hairs everywhere. <laughs> that and sparkle are my favorite colors. So, uh, <laughs> um, if your pet is not used to it, start s smoothly and carefully and calmly and mm -hmm. more as a playful thing and not rough playing. Just kind of playful, kind of like, oh, hi, what do you think of that good girl? Ooh, hi, what's a good girl? And you kind of work from there and get them to be comfortable and used to be handled, which, which is very important because no, no one really wants a dog that can't be handled. It's, mm -hmm. it's like in shelters, it makes them less adoptable if they can't be handled, if they can't you know, really yes. be communicated with. Mm -hmm. So uh, a plan that I have is to get, get pet fit, uh, which also combines some of the dog yoga into shelters because it calms the dogs down to get activity and get the calming of the dog yoga and it makes them more adoptable. So in the future, I hope to be doing that. Mm -hmm. How long is the average exercise period? Until the dog has had enough. Okay, so for a small doggy like Grace, how, how long? Oh, uh, Grace is a couch potato. Couch potato. Yeah, so uh, we, we do a little. <laughs> get <laughs> the do, remote and that's it. <laughs> we do a little bit, and then if it gets real bad, we get a treat as a, as a thank you. You did really well, and then she probably will do a little more. Okay. She's a little treat oriented. <laughs> So you have a whole exercise set up for us today? Yes, I'm gonna just show kind of like a, uh, a few miscellaneous exercises. I can show you a little bit of full body exercises. There are modifications you can make if your fitness level is differently from mine. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you, you work from where you are. You know, don't judge yourself, work from where you are and do what you can and you then do be what you can. Yep, be happy about it, be proud, give yourself a pat on the shoulder and then, you know, have carrots. <laughs>
<laughs> Great idea. So I'll let you take it away with your pet exercise today. Thank you. I'll see you at the end. Okay. Are you ready, Gracie? Okay, Gracie is ready. So we're gonna start nice and easy to kind of like get a little bit of a stretch out in your hamstrings before we do some, some squats, okay? So I'm gonna make sure that Gracie is okay. So I'm gonna stick my hand under her harness so that my hand is on her chest and she's supported and my other hand is gonna hold her back. So even though I stretch a little bit, she's totally fine, she feels good. And I did hamstrings two days ago, which I feel. And just kind of stretch it over here. Good. And then we're gonna start doing some squats. So right where you are, down and up. And you wanna make sure your form is straight, that your back is it's straight and supported by your abdominals, and you're staying more in your heels than you are onto your toes. And you would do about 10 to 20, depending on your fitness level. Now, if you wanna make it a little bit harder, you can turn it into a lunge. And if you want to make it even more challenging, you can do lunge and arabesque, maybe for a little bit of gluteal action, or down and leg up for a little bit of hip flexor action. And of course, the other side. And I know everyone likes to work their glutes and their abs. So we're gonna go straight to the abdominals. What do you think, Gracie? Gracie's okay with it. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna make sure that the dog is secure first and foremost. And we're just gonna lean back, pulling your abs in as much as you can. Try to find a good tipping point where you don't feel like you're arching your back. Pulling your abs in, and you wanna make sure that you're breathing. <laughs> And if you're comfortable and the dog is comfortable, you can totally make it a little bit harder. See where you are. Are you comfortable, Gracie? <laughs> Good, okay. And you're gonna have hairs everywhere, but that's just a badge of honor when it comes to fitness. Okay, so let's do some side planks. What do you think, Gracie? If you're in between, get tired, you can always take a little bit of time to stretch out. You can give your dog a tiny bit of a massage maybe. Stretch your spine a little bit. Give them a little hip massage, which calms them down really wonderfully. Okay, stay. And you can maybe do some push-ups and give your dog some kisses. What do you think, Gracie? You work from where you are, so if you need it to be a little lighter, you just give yourself some more support until you build up the strength. Good girl. So if I wanted to do some triceps, if I wanted to do some biceps, I can definitely use the dog for my biceps, but you want to make sure that they're not upside down because most dogs don't like to be upside down. So I'm going to do some easy tricep press-ups. You okay, Gracie? Okay, come on. And of course, you wanna do the other side. <laughs> and sometimes they run off and that's okay and then they'll come back if you continue doing what you're doing. And once you start stretching them and getting them to relax, they're really gonna start staying with you a little bit more and enjoying the time. Come on, good girl. Okay, stay, good stay. So we're gonna do a little bit of stretching. Good girl. So you know most dogs enjoy a little bit of massage, a little bit of scratching, and then you can get a little bit of stretch in yourself. Are you running off again? <laughs> Good girl. Good girl. 
and at the end, you just give them a lot of praise for being so good. If you want to put in some yoga moves, you totally can. Stay. Good stay. Good stay, Gracie. Good stay. And my favorite, make sure that the dog is secure. It's a little bit Lion King, but we like it because our dogs are the best. Try a few of them if you like. And you can always check out my website for some free exercises with you and your companion. I know that the dogs are not props. They're companions for you to work out with and get pet fit. Thank you, Summer. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, I got a workout just looking at her. What an incredible workout. So you did push-ups, a yeah. little bit of ab work, sort of, kind of, and kisses for Grace. Lots of kisses, always lots of kisses. Now I noticed that the, the more that you exercise, the closer that she stayed to you. She did a little runaway thing, but she always came back to you and she became more and more comfortable around you. They're dogs and you know, they have the attention span of dogs. <laughs> so, you know, if, if so, sometimes if you want to keep a light leash on them, you totally can. Mm -hmm. um, but, and sometimes, you know, in, in classes even, if it's a dog yoga class, if it's a fitness uh, animal class, Sometimes they run off and they kind of want to explore a little bit and they always come back and, and as time goes, they stay with you more and more and they want to be a part of this. Yes, yes. So I noticed you were doing more of the working out than Gracie was. What's up with that? She, we travel a little bit today and we have a lot of modeling this week, so I think she was not as focused as she usually is, which is fine because you know what? I'm not always as focused as, as you know, as I usually am, so. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> we just, you are where you are and work from there. This is true. Thank you so much, Summer and Gracie, for stopping by Celebrity Catwalk. My pleasure, her See, pleasure. Yes, see you soon? Yes. Okay, see you next time, guys, on Celebrity Catwalk. Welcome to Celebrity Catwalk. I'm Stephanie Matera, and today I have a special guest with me, Ron Rapitalo. He is a personal stylist and an executive career coach. He's here to give you tips on landing the dream job and looking your best while doing it. Hi, Ron. Thank you for being here with us today. Thanks, Stephanie, for having me. I know I told you it's my first time being on camera like this, so it's pretty exciting. <laughs> oh, well, we're very excited yeah. to have you here. Mm -hmm. And I know you work for Jay Hilburn. You're a personal stylist there, and it's a mm -hmm. menswear uh, line. It's considered luxury menswear. Yes. Can you speak a little bit about the brand that you represent? Sure. So Jay Hilburn is a luxury menswear line. Uh, started in Dallas about 10 years ago. And one of the exciting things about what we do is when we got into the market that we decided to make luxury clothing something that was more affordable to men. Oh, right? I love that. Um, and so a lot of times when I've talked to guys about, you know, what luxury means to them, they're thinking, wow, you know, this is something that costs a hell of a lot of money and would take a hell of a lot of time. And one of the things that the company's done is make the experience similar to what you get when you buy a piece of luxury clothing, mm. but with faster times for you to get your clothing oh, okay. and at a cost that's much more amenable to, I think, most men. Okay. And so I'm not going to get into all the details of that, but essentially um, we have brought luxury to the regular guy, I would say. And so oh, we God. do custom shirting. Yeah. And that's the core of the business, I would say it's the Coca-Cola of the business. Um, we also do made-to-measure shirts, shirts. Mm. and then we also do a ton of ready-to-wear clothing. The joke I like to make amongst my clients is that the only things we don't sell are underwear and gym clothing. <laughs> we sell everything else, <laughs> literally. So. so can you tell our viewers the difference between yeah. a custom shirt and a made-to-measure suit? Because I don't know if a lot of people yeah. are aware. Absolutely. So um, the description I like to give my clients when they're usually not sure of it either is, um, something that's custom is literally someone's cutting the fabric okay. and then sewing the fabric, whether it's a shirt or a suit. Yes. And so made to measure, there are templates of what the suits look like, right? Mm -hmm. And then accommodations are made for it by a master tailor based oh. on um, some things that we can do for 
the suit. And okay. so simple things like length of sleeve length of yes. a jacket or the pant length. Yes. Um, but there are also other things like we can take in the waist hip so that a guy doesn't, if a guy doesn't like a boxy look mm -hmm. on his suit jacket, we can take in the waist hip to bring it in a little bit, which is how my um, particular jacket fits wow. me right now. And what is the average price point on yep. a made to measure suit? So we start out at $745 mm -hmm. and the price goes up from there. Um, quick way I, uh, that I explain to guys how it goes up is it depends on quality mm -hmm. of the wool that's used in the suit okay. and the complexity of the pattern. All right. So dependent on, you know, complex on those things, the price can go up um, about double that price. Okay, incredible. Yeah. So you also are an executive career coach. Yes. And I'm a firm believer in mm -hmm. fashion is part of your preparedness, right, mm -hmm. for going in for a job interview. And it's also how you present your personal brand. Right. So how do you bring your two worlds together, both coaching people for jobs and right. also making them look their best? Yeah, and so, you know, a lot of my career coaching comes out of my own network and talking to candidates in my executive search business. And so um, a lot of times when I'm talking to candidates about their interview process and about what they're looking to interview for, mm -hmm. um, what often comes up is how should I dress for my interview, mm -hmm. right? And so um, the men's personal styling comes in handy because I really believe that when you dress well, especially mm -hmm. for an interview, yeah. you lose confidence. Yeah. It's one less thing to worry about when you are dressed well. I like to say it's the opportunity for someone during an interview to put on their superhero costume. Yes, yeah. And so when you think about being a superhero, you're your best self. That's right. And I think for an interview, you have to be your best self. That's right. I mean, in some level, admittedly, an interview is kind of a staged event, yes. to be honest with you. And yeah. so kind of playing with that world, I tell candidates in terms of style, especially for gut, like sticking yeah. to guys, blue and gray, blue yes. and gray, blue, navy and gray, blue and gray, navy mm. and gray. Um, because those colors are things that every guy should have in a suit in yes, the closet. Absolutely. So that's the standard, mm -hmm. right? And then you can mix and match from there and do a lot of other things dependent on the guy's sense of style. And so mm -hmm. what I'm wearing right now, if I took off my cardigan, yes. I could wear this in an interview right now. Exactly. Exactly. I might maybe not wear the pink um, uh, pocket square, dependent yes. on the sector and what I might perceive of the culture of the organization. Good based. point. And so I think, you know, I like splashes of color. Yes. And so I often tell guys, based on their style when they're thinking about an interview, mm -hmm. better to go a bit more conservative when you're interviewing right. than to wear something that's like considered flashy. Because what's yes. the, if if I was doing something in entertainment, like being on the show, um, <laughs> then this is, I, I, I think this is appropriate, right? <laughs> yeah. But if I'm, you know, interviewing somewhere um, and wanting to make an impression, it's funny the kinds of things, having been on the other side as a hiring manager, right. someone who recruits for a living also, yeah. how you dress and subtle th things like colors that may have people think certain things about you, yeah. you want to not have those things in people's heads because other things being equal, sometimes how you dress for an interview is what's gonna sometimes be a tipping point about whether you're Absolutely. chosen for the job or not. I'm not saying that that's right, but I'm saying you don't want that to be a but decision. But it's realistic. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. And so I know with a pocket square, like you're, mm -hmm. you know, you're on a fashion segment that makes sense. Yeah. But you brought up a point about sectors, and that's that's really a good point about wearing navy blue and gray. I know for the financial industry, yeah. that's preferred. Absolutely. Are there other industries where you could say there's a certain look that is yeah. more um, amenable for yeah. getting a um, job? I have some clients, um, men's personal styling clients yeah. and friends um, who work in media or in mm -hmm. entertainment. And so if we were to go to L.A., yeah. if I dressed like this, I would look like a fish out of water. Like, why <laughs> is he in a, <laughs> Unless I was like an executive producer. But even then, yeah. I think, you know what, I, 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 one of my very best friends in the world is a um, producer on a show I'm not going to name here because I don't want to big them up that much but um, it's you know you want to look creative casual yes exactly right? and creative casual I think the easiest way to describe it is you may wear a blazer yes but maybe a funkier blazer yes. like not you know a single solid I might wear something like a louder plaid yeah. with a nice pair of jeans mm -hmm. maybe you're going to bring out your a pair of chucks tricks. 
<laughs> yes, I always or see that in the entertainment a industry. A pair of really cool black sneakers. Yes. Um, and you're gonna look comfortable because I think in the creative industry, yes. my perception is is that that kind of dress, comfort equals creativity for them. And right. comfort in the creative world is not dressing like this. Right. Right. Yeah, you look like you're ready for New York business world. Yeah. That you know, and I think you do have to kind of uh, adapt for your environment. Yeah. And it can be, like you said, a tipping point if they're on the fence about two candidates and yeah. one candidate came in just looking really polished. Right. I think people will make the next leap that you're polished in your presentation, right. you're gonna be polished on the job. You're gonna be right. a detail person on the job. Bingo. And I think that's why the style matters, right? Because what I, I coach guys on, because I think of myself, yes, I'm a men's personal stylist, but because I think of myself as a coach in life, what I'm trying to do is impart expertise mm -hmm. and a framework so a man understands when he's putting something on, he knows why. Exactly. That's all I want. I, I'm not, you know, um, I have clients that are super conservative. I wouldn't dress like that. And I have guys that would dress in a way that that's not my style either. Like it might be too tight or too loud of a color. Um, but if he knows why he's wearing that and what that means to him and what impression he wants to make, Yes, you still empower people to be them, true to themselves, but it's yeah. just being that best version of yourself. Yeah. I wanted to talk about your recent blog article about yes. failure, and um, this yeah. has kind of been a tone for me in a few of my interviews recently uh -huh. about how you can channel failure or being fired, which yeah. is like, you know, no one likes those two F words. <laughs> right. So um, if they are, um, you know, if you take it and you make it a positive, then you can actually grow out of it and sometimes it's right. a stepping stone to success. So right. can you um, talk to that a little bit about the time you were fired and, and yeah. how you've kind of used it maybe to even help inspire your clients? Yeah, um, so it was wonderful about posting that blog. That was a year in the making. Um, literally, that LinkedIn blog was a draft for a year. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what it was about the time of year. It, I, it was around fall, so I think it was September when I actually posted that. Mm -hmm. And I just got the impetus to say, I wanted to share it. Because mm -hmm. I've talked about what's in that blog with my coaching clients, with potential candidates for jobs that I'm, I'm, I'm sourcing and supporting yeah. so much, yeah. that putting it to paper felt like it made sense because I wanted to share it even more mm -hmm. broadly because there are a lot of things I had learned in imparting that knowledge one-on-one -on -one and seeing how people were able to take it. I think the biggest thing for me is that, you know, there's a scarlet letter folks often get, especially in the industry that I source from the education nonprofit industry when you're fired. Yes. Right? And there are all kinds of code words for it, right? Um, uh, there were budget cuts. Yes. There was um, a mutual parting, right? There are all kinds of things, and because mm -hmm. I've worked on HR talent teams, you I know. know what those things sound like, right? Yes. And so, when I went through the experience myself, it was disconcerting because I felt like, what did I do wrong? Mm -hmm. Am I not worthy of this job and of this work? It was a real confidence shatterer at first. Mm. I think the thing that I realized most is that relying on the people who love me was, was what saved me. Wow. And so I still remember, Stephanie, I sent an email out literally the day it happened yeah. and sent out an email that got an 85% response rate from like 100 plus people that I knew. I mean, it's the craziest like response rate I've ever gotten in any email in my life. So you, you were like open right away after it happened to tell people the position you were yeah, in? Yeah, because the writing was on the wall. I knew oh, something wow. was about to happen and so I literally walked in the office that day and they were like, Ron, we need to talk to you. I was like, yep, it's happening. Oh, wow. Got my walking papers, I'm like, it was a huge relief. Yes. To have it happen, right? Because it just wasn't working out. I mean, I gained weight. I wow. just looked unhappy. I wish I had right. a picture to show wow. at the time I was working at this one place. I just looked off. Wow. And so a lot of what I've told folks is that how you control your narrative and how you have people help you yes. find your next thing, because I've had several instances to talk to folks who've been fired. Yes. It happens Executives, to everyone. Yes. It happens Executives, to everyone. Principles. Mm -hmm. And the theme that I've often told them that and that they've shared with me is that they were able to tap the people that knew and respected them, and those are the folks that helped them land on their feet. Wow. All the time. And if I, this is gonna sound a little corny, but if you come from a place of love mm -hmm. to have people help you, 
right? And especially, I think, brass tacks. Mm -hmm. When folks who know and respect your work, mm -hmm. they're willing to put more out there for you. Yes. So it's different when someone, I, I've talked to several people who've been fired admittedly, yes. right? I often tell them like, look, I'm gonna be honest with you, right? Yes. It is different for me to help you. And I don't know you yes. from like, I've only had a 15 minute combo, so admittedly, I don't have as much skin in the game to go all the way out there for you because right. I have to like mitigate risk well, it's here. it's a, re a reputational risk for yourself. What if something it's more egregious happened, right? Yes. I mean, I talked to one person who works in education. He's like, you can find me on, on an article online. And they'll say this happened, but something else actually happened. And so, you know, sometimes when it's that delicate he says, she says, I have to be careful because of my right. own professional integrity and reputation. Exactly. But I often say, who are the people that have managed you, who love you, who know your work, really who will go you. to bat for you? Yes. Those are the folks you have to rely on. And sometimes you yeah. have to take a step back. Right. Maybe leave an area geographically yes. if you can. Or, you know, when I say lay low, maybe take a job that's a rung or two below what you've done yes, previously yes because folks when they hire a risk averse that's they so really true. are and I, I don't know. you know I and I know this from talking to people across industries it's like wow you got fired. except for like you know working in pro sports right you yes. can be fired and get a job tomorrow I mean that's a kind of crazy thing that's not even <laughs> there but I think in the professional sectors when you're fired it's like even right. if you have what I would consider a sob story, there's always a little bit of like, well, they, but they, what, why? What, re is there more? Yes, exactly. And I think once that seed is put, that's why I often work with folks on like how to control that narrative, how yeah. to have someone help them say, hey, I know Ron backwards and forwards. He is a man of integrity. He does great work. He yes. just didn't get a good deal at this previous place. Yes. He just needs a shot. Yeah. And that person goes on a risk and it's an endorsement and yeah. they go out on the line, but because yeah. they know you, it's not as much of a risk as someone right. reaching out, maybe right. blind on LinkedIn, right. on your profile, yep. and find something in you inspiring in hopes that you'll yeah. make a connection for him. I really appreciate you sharing your candid experience yeah. and story. I, I enjoyed reading the blog article and I wanted Thank to you. share it with our viewers. So thank you so much for tuning in to Celebrity Catwalk. I'm Stephanie Matera. If you want to reach out to Ron Rapatalo, you can email him at rapatalo at gmail.com. Yeah. And um, as we mentioned, he's a personal stylist and an executive career coach, and he can help you not only look your best, but feel your best and get your, your next opportunity. We'll catch you next time.